Well, welcome back to Finance Uncut. On today's episode, is gold and silver dead? So I wanted to share this article from Jeff Clark, which I thought was just a brilliant, brilliant read. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite books, a book that had a big impact on my investment career. And any of you that uh, are interested in investing in gold, silver, gold and silver stocks, commodities, and basically inflation type investments, you'll want to stay tuned to the end of this video where I will share uh, the details of this book. So they declared silver and gold were dead in 1976, but the kooks were right. So what is a kook? Well, it's a slang for an eccentric, strange or foolish person. So a lot of us uh, gold and silver investors over the last, well, especially over the last 12 months anyway, have been called a, a bit of a kook. So if you think silver is headed to new all-time highs in this cycle, or you believe gold is going to mid four figures or even five figures, then many people might think you're a kook. I've certainly been called that at times. But here's the thing. Kooks like us have been right before. When gold was in the low $100 in the mid-1970s, some made the outlandish prediction that it would hit $500 and were promptly labelled a kook. And ditto for silver. Some had the audacity to forecast $40 silver when it was in the low $4 range in 1976. Those guys are nothing but kooks was a common refrain from the mainstream at the time, as you'll see. And consider what was happening to gold and silver back then. Prices were locked in a downward spiral for most of 1975, and then cratered even more in 1976. They just couldn't seem to catch a break. There were numerous catalysts many thought would push them higher, but the downtrend wore on and on, pushing many investors to give up. Sound familiar? As you're about to see, there were plenty of negative sentiments about gold and silver then, all of which proved horribly wrong not long afterward. I really wanted to know what investors and the media were saying about gold and silver at the time, so I enlisted the help of two local librarians along with my nephew to dig up some quotes from 1976. Here is what we found scrolling through the old spools of microfiche. Gold and silver are dead. The public statements listed below were all made in 1976 I put the comments in a price chart pinpointing the date they were said relative to the price. You'll also see I can't resist making some snarky comments of my own. I'll show you later what happened to the gold and silver price and just how embarrassingly wrong these people were and how right the kooks were. So you can see in this chart, you can see gold and silver uh, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 13 uh, different articles from the mainstream financial media calling silver and gold dead. So uh, let's actually have a look at each one of those now. All right, number one, for the moment at least, the party seems to be over for gold and silver. New York Times, March 26. The New York Times, parties never last long. Fundamentals do. Number two, though happily out of the precious metal, Mr. Heim is no more bullish on the present state of the stock market than any of the unre constructed gold bugs. He's had so much fun twitting of late. He's urging his clients to put their money into treasury bills, New York Times, March 26. I bet a lot of Mr. Himes clients weren't too happy with him when gold rose over sixfold by January 1980. While the US dollar, which underpins the value of treasury bills, lost a whopping 26.2% of its purchasing power in the same period. Number three, it's a seller's market. No one is buying gold, a dealer in Zurich, in Zurich said. New York Times, July 20. Sounds familiar? But so what? To be a successful investor means to look at the horizon and invest in for, for what's likely ahead, not what's popular at the moment. Number four, though the price recovered to $111 by week's end, that is still a dismal figure for gold bugs who not long ago were forecasting prices of $300 or more. Time Magazine, August 2nd. Turns out those $300 price forecasts by the gold bugs were actually too low. Gold would hit $850 in less than four years. Number five, 
Meanwhile, the economic conditions that triggered the gold boom of 73 through 74 have largely disappeared. The dollar is steady, world inflation rates have come down, transitory folks, and the general panic set off by the oil crisis has abated. Uh, energy crisis throughout Europe and China at the moment, and the US, actually everywhere in the world. All those trends reduce the distrust of paper money that moves many speculators to put their funds in gold. Time magazine, August 2nd. How short-sighted can you get? The symptoms may have eased, but the root causes were still present, as gold and silver prices would later prove. Number six, our own predictions are that gold will go below $100, with some hesitation possible at the $100 level, as stated by Mr. Heim in the August 19 New York Times. Oops, gold never fell below $100. So if you listen to Mr. Heim, or even just waited to buy until gold did fall below $100, you never got the chance to buy or else paid a lot more. This is the same Mr. Heim as number two above. I wonder how many clients he had left by 1980. Number seven, currently Mr. Lalogia, I think I pronounced that right, has this to say, there is simply nothing in the economic picture today to cause a rush into gold. The technical damage caused by the decline is enormous and it cannot be erased quickly. Avoid gold and gold stocks. New York Times, August 19th. Well, you can see Mr. Lalogia's comments were made within days at the bottom. Investors should have done the exact opposite of what he recommended. And if they did, they could have or would have cleaned up. Number eight, gold was an inflation hedge in the early 70s, the Citibank letter says. But money is now a gold price hedge. New York Times, August 29. Are they serious? Sounds the Citibank employees. Sounds like the Citibank employees needed to learn the definition of money. This reminds me of some of the stupid comments we've heard today, like the guy that called gold a pet rock. I'll point out that gold has risen 52% since he made that asinine comment. Number nine, private American purchases of gold once this was legalized at the end of 1974, it never materialized on a large scale. The gold bugs have indeed been routed. Special responsibilities fall on the victorious dollar. New York Times, August 29. Spit my coffee out and call me crazy. Not only was gold on the cusp of setting records for demand, the victorious dollar has lost an incredible 79% of its purchasing power since this comment was made. Number 10, some experts with good records in gold trading declare it is still too early to buy bullion. New York Times, September 12th. I guess they don't understand the concept of contrarian investing. If instead of listening to the experts, investors did buy gold, they would have watched their position rise 635% by January 1980. Number 11, Wall Street's biggest brokerage houses after having scorned gold investments during the bargain days of the late 60s and early 70s, made a great display of, of arriving late at the party. New York Times, September 12th. Another example of investors arriving late to a bull market. Should we thank the investors today, the ones that will push prices higher when they finally rush to gold, uh, to buy gold and silver? Number 12, he believes the price of bullion is headed below $100 an ounce. Who wants to put money over there now? Lawrence Helm, New York Times, September 12. Gong! Not only did gold never fall below $100, but if you did put your money there, you could have changed your financial standing. Number 13, author Elliot Janeway, whose book jacket states presidents listen to him, was asked by a book reviewer about his preferred investments. He writes, then gold and silver? He likes neither. In fact, he writes, any argument against putting your trust in gold and backing it up with money goes double for silver. Silver is fool's gold. New York Times, November 21. This was my favorite quote from someone who was extremely popular in the day. I hope presidents didn't listen to Mr. Janeway because he ate his words big time. From the date of his comments to silver's peak of $50 in January 1980, silver rose a whopping 1,055%. And the final one, number 14, Mr. Holt admits that in 1974, intense speculation caused the gold price to get too far ahead of itself. New York Times, December 19. This reminds me of Harry Dent's claim that gold would fall to as low as $250. I got so tired of his claims that I bet him. 
I'll give you three guesses who won. What it looks like to eat crow. All these comments ended up being dead wrong. How wrong? Well, let's pan out a few years and see what happened to gold and silver prices after these comments were made. And, well, you can see right here that the kooks ended up being right. And I have a good feeling that we're going to be right once again. And what have I been saying since I started this channel last year is that my price target uh, for, for silver in particular, I've said triple digit silver is likely, uh, is probable, and I've had a date of 2023. And I've said it could be a year out on either side. So it could be as early as next year, maybe not, uh, but it could be 2024. But uh, I stand by that at this point. So the kooks were indeed right. Those that called for higher prices, higher than what most mainstream investors would believe, were proven correct. Some projections were too low, and to be fair, some projections were higher than what they ultimately hit. This doesn't necessarily guarantee we'll be right today, but we do have a very similar setup. Overwhelming fundamentals, with most in the mainstream not yet invested in the monetary metals. They don't seem to fully grasp or want to grasp what can happen when there's a rush into gold and silver. Yet the history lesson is here for all of us to see. The problems of the day hadn't fully played out. Those investors assumed the concerns at the time had largely dissipated just like today. Transitory and all that. So are you a kook? Like those in the mid-70s, one who thinks silver could hit new all-time highs and gold could rise to mid four figures or higher. History says you just may be proven correct. My advice is hold on and make sure you're prepared for the next big run. Our current circumstances, just like back then, demand higher silver and gold prices, regardless of what the top may eventually look like. Patience won in the end and will again today. Don't listen to people who are unfamiliar with the gold market or want to see their name in the headlines or have a deep-seated belief that central bankers and politicians will save the day. So is gold and silver dead? I don't think so. In fact, I think gold and silver is behaving just like it has in all these previous bull markets. Now, I've shared in videos going back uh, last year when I started this channel that uh, I had triple digit silver um, as my price target. And I said then that 2023 was uh, the year that I thought that uh, it would get there uh, with a year on either side to, to to possibly happen. So it could happen next year, probably doubt it. Uh, it could happen 2024. But my uh, target, my year for, for the triple digit silver is still 2023 and I stand by that for now. So that brings me to this book that I wanted to recommend to you guys. And I'll just grab it. So it's Doug Casey's book, crisis investing. So I believe his first edition was uh, published in the late 70s, uh, 80, uh, 1980, somewhere around there. So I was only just born around that time. So obviously I didn't read that one, but I picked this one up, which is crisis, crisis investing for the rest of the 90s. And you know, it's a bit worn, a bit, bit old now, uh, as you can see, but in this book, and I highly recommend it, uh, this book had a big impact on, on my um, outlook in terms of economics and especially in terms of uh, investing. So it's where I first started to learn about uh, gold and silver in particular, inflation, deflation, uh, investing uh, when we've got economic crises at hand. And, and But most importantly, what really struck me was when gold and silver does uh, go into bull markets when there is a uh, devaluation of currency or um, the actual miners and explorers, the juniors, just have tremendous gains, like huge gains. And so learning from Doug's uh, investment uh, life uh, has been a big impact and big influence on the way I look at things and, and why I uh, have invested in this space and had success in this space. And sure, I've made some mistakes in this space as well. Um, but I believe everything is set up for the same thing to occur. And so I highly recommend that book. 
Um, yeah, it was only earlier this year that I actually found out that Doug um, trades and sells options. So I've been selling options for over a decade now, as, and that's a big part of my uh, overall investment and trading um, strategies. I had no idea that Doug um, sold options. And so it was earlier this year, I did a video about it. So I'll actually put a link in the description below to that video where Doug talks about how he sells options and uh, how that's a big part of uh, his uh, strategy as well. And uh, yeah, so I had no idea, yet Doug has had a big influence on me. I I find Doug, whether he's talking about social issues, um, political issues, uh, economic issues, and, it's, and investment issues, I think along the same lines as Doug. And um, you know, Doug's been very successful and yeah, you know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. So just follow successful people, follow what they do. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I've made every mistake under the sun, uh, and some have been um, painful. Uh, hopefully, you just don't have to learn those real painful lessons that I did. But um, yeah, so once again, I highly recommend crisis investing. Uh, not sure where you can pick it up at bookstores or maybe online at Amazon or eBay. I can't even remember where I got this book from, but uh, yeah, had a big influence on my investment career and especially in the commodities and, and gold and silver space. So definitely get a copy of that. Anyway, guys, uh, what do you guys think? Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below as usual. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. Anyway, guys, take care and I'll see you again on another episode of Finance Uncut.